All right. So we are, it is Balmy Bay Invite Weekend. How is that a week, the week of, huh? Yeah, the week of Balmy Bay Classic. Yeah. Balmy Bay Classic. Okay. So, so Coach Justin Wharton, Coach Wharton, the head wrestling coach. This is year number two yeah. for the Clay Screaming Eagles, right? Year number two. Yeah. I don't know if you're the Screaming Eagles, but you're the Eagles. I know that the much. Eagles. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Oregon, Ohio, east side of uh, Toledo, correct? Correct. Okay. So it is um, right on the edge of, of East Toledo, the border of East Toledo, literally abuts to Oregon, Ohio. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where I lived, uh, you could throw, I probably couldn't throw a football, but someone with strong arm could throw a football to the East side. Okay. And then you went to high school at Clay as well, correct? Yeah. Graduated in 2009. Oh man, you're a baby. You're so young. Yeah. So young, such a young guy. Uh, so 09 grad of Clay. And then where did you go to undergraduate? Heidelberg. Heidelberg. And you wrestled for coach Miller. Coach Miller, uh, Coach Shear for a year, and then Coach Shock for two. Are you serious? Was that? And yeah. now who, who is it? Patrizzi now? Who is it now? Patrizzi now. Yeah, Tony Patrizzi. Patrizzi. He's very good. 2015. Yeah, he's a Perry guy. Um, but after Heidelberg, he stayed in the in the area. He's lived in like the Mohawk area since graduating Heidelberg, I'm pretty sure. He's got a teaching job there. Yeah, he was a teach. Is he still a teacher at Mohawk? No, he's uh, full-time at Heidelberg. Full-time Heidelberg. Okay. So Heidelberg's a D3 school, and then you coached a couple years. I want to say, was it Whitewater? Yeah, Wisconsin Whitewater. So UW-Whitewater. Um, Whitewater is the one that had the crazy um, lawsuit, didn't they, with Tim Fader? Yeah, they had the, the lawsuit with Tim Fader, uh, Coach Shock, and myself. We came in right after that during all that storm. So it was uh, – it was a learning experience as a young coach, <clears throat> to say the least. So, did you guys ever end up get drawn into any of that? Like, would you guys have to go do uh, deposition and be in court and stuff, or was that just would they leave you alone? They left us alone. Yeah, because we were, yeah, we were we weren't involved. Um, so, yeah, we were never pulled into any of that. And that because that was the administration and, and Fader, right? That was who was it? That was there, that was the two plaintiffs, yeah. you'd say, right? Right. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, they went to court. Yes. And yeah. You, you got a, you got a deluxe size lesson on that. Did you on litigation yeah. and right. right unions, right? Was there a union involved? Oh, uh, I don't think so. Okay. Um, no, I don't think so, but it was definitely, uh, I was 20, like four years old going out there. My first coaching, Oh, I was a GA at Heidelberg and I was like my first real coaching job. And, it was like, boom, here you go. You're in the middle of all this. And, um, you know, he and Coach Fader, his guys loved him too. So they weren't the happiest that all that was going down. And so it was uh, unique, but uh, I had a great time there. I uh, still love those guys that that we coached. We had a clay guy out there, Nick Stencil. Uh, was an All-American out there. So Related to Matt Nick Stencil. Stencil. Is he related that's to Matt? His, yeah, that's his big little brother. Are you serious? I didn't know that. Bigger little brother, yeah. So Nick Stencil and Matt Stencil are brothers. Yeah. And Nick's the older brother, but smaller. Right. Yeah. Nick wrestled like 160 in high school, 174 in college. Dude, I had no idea that there was a Nick Stencil that was an All-American from Clay from Oregon, Ohio at UW Whitewater. I had no what place what place did he take? He took like fifth or sixth. Yeah. That's crazy. I had no idea. Was he a state placer at Clay? He was two time state placer. Wow, I never realized. Brexville, Brexville finalist, actually. Wow, shame on me. Yeah, yeah, he's tough. He, he'll be upset when he hears this. <laughs> Most sensible Dude, brother. That's, oh, that's really cool, though. Yeah, it is. Cool. Yeah, it is. And so he was like a like a 71, 75, whatever. 74. 74 yeah. pounder in college. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. How did you guys get him up there? Just recruited him, huh? Well, we were uh, Coach Chuck was working on him to Heidel at, he at Heidelberg, um, and then he got the job out there, and that's yeah, that's kind of how we got him out there. Because okay. so, that his senior year of uh, high school was my senior year of college, and so I was trying to get him to come out to Heidelberg too. Um, he's followed followed Ned and I. So, 
Okay, so what brought you was Whitewater your last stop before you came back to Clay? What were no, the my, uh, chances? No, my actually my wife is a, a volleyball coach and she coached at the University of Memphis down in Tennessee. And so uh when I was at Whitewater, she was coaching volleyball at Whitewater too. And actually our first year of marriage, she coached uh up at Green Bay, which is like two and a half hours from Whitewater. So we our first year of marriage we spent two and a half hours away from Monday through Friday. And then volleyball season, I would shoot up to Green Bay and watch the games. Wrestling season, she would come down and watch the meet. So it was crazy. I always knew you were a bit of a, of a lunatic. That That's yeah. that's crazy, my friend. I'm not going to lie to you, especially right. for newlyweds, right? right? Yeah, newlyweds. And then she got the job. She got the assistant job at the university. The whole Green Bay staff got the job down at the University of Memphis. And um, she went down there and we spent, Three years down there. I coached some wrestling down there. I coached at, uh, I don't know if you ever heard Christian Brothers High School in Memphis. They're, pre they're a pretty solid program. Oh, that's what, was it where Rob, uh, Cornell Robinson went to? Was he, is no, it you're, thinking, you're thinking of the one in St. He's Louis. St. Louis. He's St. Louis, right? That yeah, was this Louis. one's in Memphis. This is um, gotcha. the guy who beat Jordan Burroughs went there from America, uh, went, wrestled for Mizzou. Okay. I got gotcha. you. I, I can't remember his name. But, yeah, so I, I helped out there and helped out at another local high school, and then we moved back home. I coach at St. Francis, so Dude, for one year. And now you teach at Clay. Yeah. Did you teach at St. Francis? No, I worked in the, at the diocese. I worked uh, like in the fundraising department. Okay. Like are, are you the type of person who doesn't even care about where where and when you retire? It's like ah, I'm going to work until I'm 80 anyway. Is that the way you look at things? Um. No, I don't know about that necessarily. Um, I The one thing I do know is I want to be involved in wrestling for a very long time. And so, you know, a, a, a career that – and, you know, I went to school for education. But, you know, a career that's up my field that is going to allow me to, to coach wrestling and be involved in the sport is, is pretty much what I want to do. So um, the, the teaching part is great. When I – you know, when I, when I got out of Heidelberg and I started coaching college – I was like, I'm never going to use my license, you know, my education license. I'm just going to coach college wrestling. And I think we've talked about it before. The pay there is uh, not always livable. So you got to. You know, I'm guessing that. your wife's pay wasn't even very good when she would go to all these places as an assistant coach, as a volleyball coach, because the Olympic sports are notorious. They're notorious for underfunding. Right. They're, they're, they're all notorious for it. Could you say the same thing? I and mean, I know we've talked about this before, but. Would you say the same thing for the Olympic sports and even women's sports? Was it, was it the same oh. thing? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, even at like a, a, a higher D1 program, I think people would be um, shocked to know what the assistant wrestling coach or the assistant volleyball coach makes at uh, even a power five school, you know. So, um, yeah, it was uh, definitely similar that way in, in volleyball. That's it's mind blowing to me because now we're, we always talk about equity and all these different things we can do. Right. My wife played volleyball at uh, Kent State. <clears throat> played at you know she played five four years, a uh, Division One. You know I have a sister in law who played <clears throat> Division One basketball at Illinois State, and I'm guessing the funding and how they treat them is pretty similar to yeah. how they treat wrestling and how they treat men's track and field. Now I have a nephew who's on the track team at uh, Kent State, so I'm guessing that those coaches that they have are fighting a lot of the same battles, but yeah. it's wild to me. And I think that's, that's just how it goes. If you're not a big revenue sport, yeah. the funding is going to look like what the funding looks like that they care. Like, right. I, think, I think that's the big thing we can all put two and two together on, on uh, whether it's mid major, you know, mid American Memphis, right. Um, yeah. uh, Bowling green, Toledo, whatever, cause those are right local next to you. Um, and then you get up to Eastern Michigan, Central Michigan, Western Michigan. I'll tell you a place where they don't skimp on funding. Grand Valley State University. They don't. They do not do that. That new wrestling. Listen, I've only – I've, I've self-admittedly not been there yet, but my nephew transferred there. Yeah. They built a brand-new standalone wrestling facility. Their football team, everything they have is first freaking class. I team teach with a lady who's a – she was a swimmer and a diver there and a cheerleader. She's like, you should see Grand Valley State University. Yeah. She's like, I went there in the 90s, and it's incredible. You should see it now. Yeah. So that's one that, like – and then they don't – they're not obsessed with being um, Division One and everything. Right. 
And as you know, a lot of these schools, everybody's obsessed with, yeah. we got to get up. We got to get up. And it's like, if you look at like what a lot of the NAI schools do, there's a lot of NAI schools that are just transitioning to go to D3 or D2, right? Right. So yeah. You, you know it. If anybody knows that, you know, all, you know, the, the, the pathway and the process to membership in NCA. Right. Yeah, I see. I, I, to be honest, I see a lot more schools going from the D3 model to the NAIA model because it allows some of these schools to give a little bit of scholarship money to uh, an athlete, which, you know, if it's if it's five hundred bucks or three thousand dollars, the athlete appreciates that. And um, per se, and then want to go to that school like a school like Lords University is doing a fantastic job um, just keeping kids in the area um, that are really talented and maybe want to stay home or whatever it may be. Um, they're doing a good job. Indiana tech does a good job, but yeah, grand Valley, man, they're gonna, they're going to be really strong. And Joey Simcoe is going to do a fantastic job up there. And, you know, the guy that I teach with, um, he's our offensive coordinator. He coached at Celine, uh, Michigan football there for several years and he talks about Grand Valley and their facilities. And it's just, he was just always blown away about how they represented the university and the campus there. So um, Joey's going to do a great job. Excited to see uh, where that program goes. It's wild to look at it because um, only a couple D3 and NCAA D3 teams can win the national title in Augsburg, Wartburg. Um, what's the Indiana team? Um, Wabash. Wabash had a chance where they could have made a run. Right. Jay, uh, Johnson and Wales out on the East Coast, they get close. Sunny Cortland. Yeah. I, but been... what's crazy to me is, John. I want to say it was John Stutzman who told me he goes, Whitewater is one of the schools that can actually win. Yeah, the way, the way they treat it, the way their admission admissions work, and the way they fund it, they're yeah. actually one of the teams who he felt. I don't, I don't know if that was blown smoke or what, but do you no. feel like that's a true statement? Could Whitewater, the way they fund it and the way that they act towards wrestling, could they win the D threes? Yeah, they could, and um, UW Lacrosse could do the same. Both those UW system schools are uh, funded and treated their sports like this is serious. And um, you know, my wife and I talk about it all the time because she still coaches volleyball, and like that was just you know the, the the way they ran the athletic department there was just so impressive. Um, and I know it's the same at Lacrosse or Platteville. Um, those schools just do really, really well. And they got 20,000 students on campus uh, as a compared to a Heidelberg or a John Carroll that has 2,000 students, 1,500. They got 20,000 walking around. That blows my mind because then I heard Grand Valley's got 20,000 kids. Yeah, I hear and they're walking. The dude, the in spectrum's this. insane. Like, like, I want you to think about that, right? Like, we got Heidelberg. We've got uh, even Notre Dame College, which is D D two, right? They've got twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, right? We're all in this like window where they're floating, and then these these NCA D two and these D three windows. You got Grand Valley that acts, and UW, all the UWs, Platteville. They've got uh, uh, Whitewater, yeah. Lacrosse, right? The you name Lacrosse, those oh, three, right? Yeah, they and they're within the UW, the uh, University of Wisconsin system, right? Mm -hmm. Just like the SUNY system for your New York State yeah. University at New York, right? They're in the within these systems, and there's like the Cal system, right? Like we can go through UNC mm -hmm. system, right? So they've got their cultures don't even they're nothing like the culture of a Heidelberg or a Mount Union, right? Or these mm -hmm. small theology based division three schools that Ohio has all over John Carroll. Right. Yeah. It's just a wild yeah. fluctuation of ability levels. And then well, to your point of Lords, why would a school like Lords transition up to D two or D three, they go to D three, then they can't give right. Yeah. Scholarships it yeah. all to the, to the academic model of division three. And then if they go D two, they're in this wildly, insanely, ever increasing, yeah. growing field of super funded schools that some are the size of Grand Valley State. Yeah. And scholarships, right? Right. No. Yeah. Yeah, it is nuts. And um, yeah, I was just, yeah, the UW system, they do a good job. And um, 
And yeah, they 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 really fun. You got you know, like I said, twenty thousand walking around. Wow! Um, That's, I and, see. I never knew those. I knew those were bigger systems. Yeah. But that to have the UW White Waters, Platteville, and Lacrosse in with Heidelberg, John Carroll, and, yeah. and uh, you know what, what's the other one down? Um, <clears throat> we got Wittenberg, Ohio right? Wittenberg. Yeah. Ohio Westland, I believe. Ohio Westland. Ohio Westland, Muskegon. Muskegon, right? Like they're those are small private theology yeah. based schools for the most part. Yeah. Mind blowing, dude. Um uh in D2 that you can do a quick ready made, a quick ready made win in two or three years. Like what Grand Valley, like in yeah. three years, if Grand Valley is not in a position to bring a trophy home they're doing something wrong and they Joey might not be the guy. And I talked to Joey about that. And he's like, yeah, we can win in three years. He told yeah. me, that. and yeah. I, he's not delusional because as you know, in the D one setup, everybody's lined up right now for runner up position. If you don't know, yeah. I, yeah. I know that yeah. you know that and everybody else knows that, but those five or six that are lined up for the runner up position, you know, coach Papalizio thinks he can win at NC state. Yeah. Right. And that's yeah. what it's going to make it. Stranger things have happened, right? Mm -hmm. NC State won. I wouldn't be, my mind wouldn't be completely blown. Or if Ohio State had a crazy run, or clearly Michigan with the squad they put together this year, they, you know, if they won, you know, look at them at 2022 and then won the Big Ten and were close uh, uh, in Detroit, right? Like, but everybody else besides those five or six teams, there's a no man's land at, there's a big fall off, right? D1 is this crazy. Six or seven team, eight team, ten team vacuum. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I would agree um, with that. Um, and kind of going back to, I, I was thinking about the the Wisconsin thing. You know, uh, the UW like they take it super serious out there. The D three road, and uh, which they should. You know, they have a forum page out in Wisconsin dedicated just to college D three wrestling, and they go on there and just like you know some of the crazy comments on high school forums or whatever. Uh, it's pretty similar for the D3 world out there in Wisconsin. So that just kind of shows the excitement out there, um, not only in Wisconsin, but that Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois kind of area. But, um, yeah, it's, um, it's it, you know, it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of depth at all levels. D1, D2 is, is you know, really crazy. Grand Valley is good. You got Tiffin is really strong, uh, Finley and, and other schools like that. So, um, good time to be a fan of the sport. Yeah. And if you look like at Notre Dame College, what they did, how they transitioned up through NAIA, won then, and came up and won a couple. Right. E2 titles, right? They did it. They had some teams, man. There was a yeah. year. It five uh, champs one year. I called the NCAA finals in 2014. Yeah. I called the NCAA finals. Sergeant won from Finley, right? Uh-huh. Ben Sergeant won. And then five guys in a row yeah. won from Notre Dame College. <laughs> yeah, they have like Derek Four on the team. Yes, uh, was weekly. Joey Davis. They had Joey Davis. They had uh, John. Like number, number one recruit in the country. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> um, well, that was crazy because Anthony Ralph was the was the recruiting yeah. right. Yeah, he was the and, guy. Yeah, and now he's. I'm gonna tell you right now, Tom Ryan didn't pick Anthony Ralph's name out of a hat. Jay no. Jaggers, they didn't pick his name out of a hat. They don't just love him because he's a super nice guy. They yeah. like him because he's one of the best recruiters across all divisions. That's how you get Anthony Roth at Ohio State. And, and 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 hey, look at their recruiting classes. They're one of those teams that I mentioned that could pop off a year, and they did in yeah. 2015, right? Yeah. They can win. Ohio State's one of the six, seven, eight teams, well, besides Penn State, that can actually win, and they've proven it in the last 10 years of us having this conversation. Right. Yeah, Ohio State, um, you know, Michigan, man, all the resources they got. You know, it's going to be interesting to see with this transfer portal and um, the schools with the money and how this continues to evolve. But what Michigan was able to do uh, in the offseason with all their portal guys, it hasn't really maybe shown. Like, they didn't have the best performances at Cliff Keen and a few other events. But they're a team that if they are all healthy and – those guys know how to compete in March, you know, at the NCAA tournament, that group of 10 guys they got. So, yeah, yeah, it's exciting. And we were just talking in our coaches, obviously, I, you know, we haven't seen Penn State. I, at least I feel like I haven't seen them that much in the last few weeks. Granted, all of our holiday tournaments were 
spread thin. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I still think Penn State's going to, you know, carry the torch and run away with it. But you just never know. Like you said, crazier things have happened. Well, I think the also the problem, like if you look at Michigan, um, I don't think Shane Griffith is a 74. I think he's a 65. Yeah. You got to mean, but then the team just doesn't, you're going to put, someone's going to be slotted. One of those two guys is going to slot at the wrong weight. Yeah. Shane, I think Shane is, is an NC champ, right? Yeah. Um, he's real good. Um, he's a Stanford grad, going to be a Michigan grad. I think that's a big part of what they've got going on. If, if I'm yeah. looking on the outside, looking in. Um, but like you're saying, if you were to pop off 25 to heavyweight and just give those guys the placements that those guys, everybody at every weight's had, if you look at Will Lawan at 157, go up and down the lineup. I mean, um, obviously. So what, do you, what, what do you think? You think this is going to be a continued thing? Like um, teams are going to grab almost a whole new roster from the portal? Uh, or you think it's just like a one-time Michigan? No, I think out? I think I think what you're gonna have is it's gonna eventually just split into those. Uh, you'll split into like two different kinds. You'll have this like power twenty-five or something where you have it goes all the way down to like um, Lehigh, which isn't a bottom. You know, like if you go to the bottom of the top twenty-five, where it's like Naval Academy, mm-hmm. West Point, they'll want to kind of compete with those elite classes, and you know they're 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 funded by the federal government they're the academies yeah. i think you'll have you know the the traditional big 12s uh oklahoma oklahoma state iowa state uh mizzou those four all the big 10 and then you'll get the ivy leagues that fund it obviously like brown brown and harvard aren't going to be in there but 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 cornell and yeah. Penn will be, right um i think that's just what i see but who am i yeah. I'm, just some, I'm just some guy who talks on the internet <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I just see like a polarization, right? Like yeah. the teams that can compete in that top 25, top 30 teams, they'll almost create a different championship, I think. And and then you'll have the Riders, the George Masons, the Kent States, the Edinburghs, um, you know, Cal Baptist, right? Uh, name name the mid-tiers, right? You'll have like the SDSU, so will want to go up to that top 25, top 30. And then you'll have um, the Northern Iowa's that'll want to go in that group, but then you'll have – Years where I think you should tear it, maybe you know. What I mean, that's just the way I look at it. But yeah. I mean, is the Sacred Heart ever going to be competitive in D one? I mean, I was there the last time they had an All American, and it was an Iranian in two thousand seven in Detroit. Right. Yeah, that's just like you got to think about like what are we what are we doing here, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think it would be better served for a school like Sacred Heart and Buffalo and Kent State and Cleveland State to be in a different tier of championships. And you'd still have excitement from the uh, alumni, yeah. The fans, um, the, the, the yeah. I think they'd still get the following. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. What do you see? What do you see? Tell me your thoughts. Yeah, um, that would be. I would like to see a tiered system. You know, the way you described that out, like a one A and two A, because um, yeah, the, the Campbells of the world, the uh, Kent States are gonna struggle competing with the schools that have you know, Cliff Keen funding them or, you know, Rudis funding them, whoever, right? Um, but I see uh, – I don't see teams doing what Michigan did um, it, going forward. I I just think that um, it's a – you kind of – you can run into these situations that they're running into now where you got a guy and the, and the weights don't match up. I think it doesn't show the most loyalty or whatever. And uh, But like I said, who am I, you know? Um, I'm just interested to see how it plays out and um, coaches, man, I feel for them. They got to be so strategic and they got to work so hard, even harder. Now they've already worked hard, uh, the college coaches, but they got to work even harder now to um, not only recruit new guys, but recruit their own guys because you have other coaches poaching them with NIL money or whatever it may be, um, you know, transfer portal, new opportunities, and so these college coaches, they have their work cut out for them. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm interested to see. So, You know, if you look at, like, this, the three off the top of my head would be, like, Franick, uh, Caliendo, and um, Olenek, right? The, the NDSU guys had the perfect storm, right? Their coach left. Their coach mm-hmm. went to 
Okie State and they, follow him, right? Yep. So then obviously if you're smart, you're Iowa, you go and you you get these, you pick these guys up out of the portal, right? That that one's a no-brainer for them. But I feel for a coach like a Ryan Ludwig out of uh out of northern Illinois and when Olenek, he develops Olenek in four four years, four or five years. Yeah. Olenek's finally an all American for him, yeah. right? And then the guy transfers to Oklahoma State where he's having a dynamite year, right? Yeah. Like so. I don't know, man. I can't fault the kids. I'm going to tell you that right now. I can't. Yeah, when yeah they you can't. Make no, six no. Figures. Dude, there's guys making six figures. And and, and the mentions I just made, Yeah, you got a lot of those guys making six figures. Yeah. Justin, a lot of us as educators, we're not going to see six figures until year 20 through 35, right? Yeah. So it's going to take us up to 20 years. You're telling me we've got a kid who's 22 we can go make six figures and I'm going to bang on him. I'm going to yell at it. I'm going to be yeah. mad at that kid. And I'm going to yell the loyalty yeah. game to him. Come on. Yeah. Get in touch with reality, right? Like Michigan's not doing what anybody else would do. And, and, and <clears throat> yeah. And then the Penn state thing is, uh, is an all time great situation. Right. Yeah. Um, and they have their, their two, three deep at most of the weights. Um, 25 has been an issue for him for the last decade, but it's becoming not an issue with the Dundee kid. Right. He's really good. Right. Yeah, he is good. So, so, and I think that Coach Sanderson just has like such a strong system, and his coaches are so loyal to him. And his brother, obviously, right? They just do a really good job, and they get the best guys. And yeah. when you get the best guys, we're able to go and compete freely. Mm-hmm. Five practices, seven practices a week, um, and there, you know, you have Carter Stracci is drilling with Aaron Brooks, David Taylor is drilling with Bernie Bernie Truek. I mean. Right. Yeah, yeah, Kyle Dake in there, I, Kyle Snyder. Yeah, 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 yeah. Greg Kirkley is drilling yeah. with Kyle Snyder. I mean, they're only going to get better, man. It's yeah. a, and what do you think about, what about, you about AJ Ferrari? What do you think about Ferrari in Iowa? <laughs> what do I think? Yeah, what do you think? You think, it's a good, you think it's a good movie? You think it's going to work out for Iowa to bring this guy over? I, you know, I kind of think they're just stretching to get a win here, but. I can't figure, I can't figure it out because it's almost like, um, I just can't read the brands brothers at all. And I just don't know what's going through their mind. I know Morningstar is a good guy and I I'll frequently talk to him or text him. And we both have a, a, a obsession with the road warrior movies, right? Um, okay. we'll, we'll text more about that. Cause I like the guy and we're road warrior fans, but like, I, I don't want to bother that guy. And be like, Hey, it's forever coming. I'm just, yeah. I'm not dude. I don't want to leverage. I, I have a good friendship and a relationship with, with, with Morningstar. And that's just, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not asking my buddy Kevin Roberts or his kid Drew Roberts. Drew Roberts is the 149 for uh, Minnesota, and I go out and spend weeks at a time with the family. Have been for for over a decade, you know. Yeah. You think I'm texting them about Gable Stevenson no. all the time? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It's not. I'm. You know what I mean? Like I just, I don't. <clears throat> I have friendships with these people, and I don't want to re- re- leverage yeah. friendship over information. Yeah. It's just, it's just not that important to me. Yeah, no, I get that. Probably makes me not better at this though. No, that's all right. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, blow up Ryan Morningstar about uh, the Ferraris. I want to. I want to talk about the new yeah. Mad Max trailer I sent him. Or how are the? How's it going yeah. raising pigs? Right. Yeah, but do you think we're going to see him in an Iowa single at the Big Ten tournament? No, no, yeah. no. No, and I think the problem that he's having, and I asked the the dad, Big AJ, in um, uh, Iron Man, uh, I was like, uh, he runs into the he's running into the clock issue because oh, yeah. one has yeah. a clock. Yeah, yeah. And my question was like, hey, are we going to see him surface at a D two? And he was like, well, I don't know. You tell me. You know, it was good on his party. Like turned it on me, which I whatever man i'm gonna ask you um yeah. these the guy's actually pretty cool to me people like bag on that guy's a pretty nice guy i mean yeah. you see all the antics online and you see yeah, all the, yeah, madness yeah. And the pushing and flipping the crowd off and doing this what all whatever i mean in person to talk to those people they're not yeah they're ultra combative or hard to deal with they're they're not they're nice people to me right like yeah. do i see him at yeah. iowa I wouldn't be shocked. How about that? I wouldn't yeah. be shocked. And um, and the way it is, you can't just add someone, right? Like it's not like I think you got to add them at the semester. If I if I'm 
are they enrolled in classes right and then yeah. i don't know you tell me how do you how can you just add someone to the roster mid semester they got to be enrolled they got to be enrolled in class well, they got to be enrolled and they got to be enrolled probably within the first 4 weeks four yeah. four weeks would be my gosh yeah yeah and i would imagine class started last this past monday so, um no no there are a lot of them are starting out they start mid <clears throat> they start like uh, like either just started on Monday or they start next week. Okay. So, so their, yeah, their, their window is, is a seven to 10 day window is my, from now. Yeah. Which is hmm. like, what are, what are we at? We're January 9th. Hey, yeah. Hey, I, you know, we can talk about this all night, but I want to talk screaming Eagles, clay Eagles, okay, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clay Eagles. Dude, I love this. You know, I love this, but let's talk clay Eagles. Um, Clay Eagles had a state finalist last year. Yep, Michael Medina. Medina wrestled Marcus Blaze, correct? Correct. And then a freshman state placer in Garrison Wisner. He yep. took fourth at 113 in Division One Ohio, correct? Correct. What else am I missing? Who else am I missing there? Um, those were our uh two qualifiers last year. And uh, you know, we got returning back uh, another district qualifier, uh in the little uh, Medina, Josh Medina. Uh, he's coming back. Uh, he's a junior this year, 106 pounder. Um, he was uh, two and two at the district last year, three and two a match away. Um, he's a battler. He's a he's a com competitor. He goes with Garrison every day. And then our 13 pounder, uh, Kale Cannon. Uh, he was behind uh, kind of Micah and Garrison a little bit last year, uh, but he's in in the mix at 13 this year. Um, and he's solid. He last year, like at the OAC freshman state, you know, he knocked off some state qualifiers from the 106 bracket and uh, did the same during the freestyle season. And so uh, he's a competitor. He's going in that lightweight group. Um, and um, yeah, he'll be fun to watch. And then, um, yeah, we're young this year. Really, really young. We got 35, 36 on the, on the roster, a little bit smaller than last year. And we only got two seniors. So, um, and then we got three ju uh, juniors. So the rest, you know, freshmen and sophomore. Um, so um, real excited, you know, a little bit of inexperience, but um, the guys, they compete, they, they battle hard. And um, I'm, I'm liking where we're at right now, feeling good about where we're at heading the Maumee Bay Classic. So uh, excited to see these guys get after some tough competition. Give me your bow water, your measurements um, for competition. You you guys actually, you laid on the line. I like that. Um, was it just Wisner who went to the Ironman at, at Walsh Jesuit, or did you have multiple Ironman uh, participants? We uh, we just took Wisner to the, to the Ironman. How, how did he perform? How did you feel like Garrison Wisner performed at Ironman? I felt like he uh, performed well. You know, he went uh, two and two, the, the match that he lost – um last round of day one uh it was just a, a blocky guy that garrison and you kind of know how he wrestles with his speed a little bit uh he kind of slowed garrison down a little bit and um garrison was hesitant to get to his offense but uh since then he's made some adjustments uh, you know we, we do lay it on the line we uh the next week we went out to solon um and they got the comic classic out there um, you see, like, Aurora, Medina Highland, Wash Jesuit. Uh, Solon is there, obviously. Um, you know, so you get some co tough competition. Then we turn around and go right out to Medina uh, during the holidays. And so, and then from there to the Mommy Bay Classic. So um, the guys are tested uh, going into February, that's for sure. But um, they love it and they look forward to it. How did you guys do? What was your placements at Medina? And, and did you have any champs at Solon? And how was that placement there? We had uh, Weisner won Solon. Um, yeah, he wrestled up at twenty six, and um, he beat some good. He beat some good guys. He beat um, one of the kids from Louisville, Louisville. Um, one of the, Rhodes one of the, was it Rhodes? Nope. If you, I don't know why I can't. Think. This this young man beat Garrison at the Freestyle State Tournament. Actually, now I can't remember his name. There's, there's brothers, redhead um, brothers. Uh, real tough. Uh, Lautenheiser? No, no, no. Okay. They're tough kids. Yeah, they're tough kids. They're uh, the one that Garrison beat was a state uh, qualifier last year for Louisville. I think at twenty or twenty six. 
Baker, Colton Baker. Colton Baker, That's okay. Baker. Um, um, yeah, so Garrison beat him in the finals. And um, and then we had Kale Cannon place fifth. Uh, Josh Medina plays fifth as well. Uh, then out at Medina, you know, Garrison made the finals but had to default out uh, to Colin Limbert. Yeah, what and happened? What happened with that, that Limbert match? Just, just got a little banged up in the semifinals and – um, we didn't think it was best to go out there in middle of December and, you know, risk. Yeah, what do you got to gain? What do you got to gain? Yeah, yeah nothing. The only thing we had to lose, you know, getting knocked out of training for two weeks. So we just uh, – and I, I think that probably would have been the feature finals, Limbert and Wisner, everyone was yeah. kind of talking about. I agree. So hoping we see that at the Miami Bay Classic this weekend. Uh, Wisner's feeling good, working hard getting after it so you know, but, what? Um, you know what i'm gonna just go right there you gave me a smooth transition you brought it up not me <clears throat> are you guys gonna let the human element and common sense rule out to a seating grid are you gonna let limber be up here and wisner be down there if they're the two best guys in the weight at 120 pounds are we gonna let that common sense thing take place or are we going to throw Limbert Alex Denkins and Weisner all in the same half and then get, give Bodie Miller uh, a chance down to be in the final in the box. <laughs> are we going to do something like that or are we going to make it make sense I'm going to tell you this right now <clears throat> we had Adam Matten listen I'm on the record here right this is on yeah. the record I'm recording right yeah. I'm on the record as Gray Burnett and Adam Matt is not a semifinal on any plane of existence in a in a <laughs> any of the realm of tournaments in Ohio besides Ironman, maybe. Can we agree with that statement? I can agree. And what a match. That was a great match. Great call on you. I watched it. Uh watched that's, it. That's the, okay. That's what it what it was. It was uh, they're both great. They're yeah. both great. <laughs> and we had just a complete over analytical. Look, yeah. Look, I get it. I get it. But that's how it's done, and um, that's how we're doing it at the Miami Bay Class. Oh, so you're telling me the brackets are? I'm gonna call my guy Wags. I'm gonna be calling my guy Wags. Who does it all? Yeah, Wags is doing. The Wags turn. does a great job, by the way. He's the best. Everyone should hire him. Love He's Wags. Doing... Wags yeah. does a great job, but I just feel like you guys have this like, nope. Throw it on the card. Nope. Nope. Nope, we're definitely going to make that a finals match. Or I mean, hold, on, hold on, there's good guys who can beat those guys. With Scotty Fuller, the Fuller's pretty good, right? He ended up being the finalist on the other Fuller's end. Down, Fuller's down at 13. Fuller is good. I like Fuller a lot. Not he's Fuller. Good. Um, no, no, no. Fuller's 13. No, I was right. Yeah. I was yeah, saying Matt. I'm saying Matt and oh, Ray yeah. is what I'm That's saying, right? That's That's saying, right? That, yeah. Scotty Fuller's not a Joe Bag of Donuts. He's good, right? Yeah. But then they had Bickerton at the weight, who's really good. The twin. Yeah. The bigger twin. Um, yeah. I mean, those dudes were uh, throw, you, throw, you, throw you to know you. Yeah. yeah. And then the Kentucky State champ, they had him at the two seed. He takes fifth. Yeah. Come on, man. Well, gotta- I know. And it drives me nuts at the sectional tournament. That's how we run it, too. You know, and even at like the sectional tournament, you can't even argue for a, a seed if your wrestler doesn't have a winning record. Um, that's a listen. Record. I hit, I'm going to throw down on a dislike button for what you're talking about. I dislike that. I'm not a fan. Um, I just don't like it, and clearly it's not wet. It's but it's you guys. It's you, Mommy Bay. It's you, Perrysburg. It's you, whatever Medina. I don't know. Name the tournament. Yeah. You ultimately make your seating criteria. You make that there can be an end all, be all at the end of it, where there can be a human override component to it. Am I wrong? Um, you're not wrong. But how are you going to do that with sixty teams? Yeah, but you're how you gonna have, do that? You're gonna have everyone have input, or is it just going to be one person and then? Now you're leaving yourself open for, well, Coach Wharton is just making Wisner the one seed because, you know, or whatever, you know, things like no, that. No, you just, you know, what you do there is you 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 assign, like, I don't think Wags probably minds being a bad guy sometimes. People probably tell him he sucks or something. He does a great job, right? But Wags, would, I don't think that he would have he would have a problem with that. Like, oh, yeah, I'll make the choice. I'll make. But, like, cool. that guy, he just wants to. He's so, like, he's yeah. seeing out numbers. He's seeing how the rounds are running. He's looking at yeah. time. He's doing logistic things at the well as well at the same time, but also at the same time, he wants the highest level of competition and the best product for the fans, uh, the parents. And, um, 
you know, the, the, the kids can, can get, I think that's where he's ultimately yeah. at. Right. Right. So you're, so you're telling me there's a chance that there's not a chance that we're not, that we're going to let the seating grid and the well, analytics get in the way. Got it. I'll, that's tell you that. I'm, I'll talk to the godfather of the Miami Bay classic tomorrow, Mark beach. And I'll let him know the people want the right finals. And I'm just going to tell you, I know I'm speaking for the people, but at the same time, if Mark, Mark Beach says, yes, that's just some internet guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm okay with that answer too. <laughs> I'm all right with it. He can... yeah. I'm not for everybody. It's okay. Yeah. Um, so this tournament, give me a quick uh, rundown of the Maumee Bay Classic in Oregon, Ohio, which is traditionally the second weekend of January. Um, it's had some weather uh, restrictions where they've been able to run thing real, real quick and get teams out of there. You've finished at noon before you've done some and things that haven't been under you and things that have been under you. Um, you always run into like that, that January weather in, in Northwest Ohio uh, on Lake Erie, right. You know, it can be pretty unpredictable, but talk to me about the tournament. Did you wrestle in the tournament? I did not. Um, the tournament wasn't in existence when, um, I was a wrestler when I was a wrestler this weekend was the Mary Kerr. I'm sure you remember the Mary Kerr yeah. at Waite high school. And so when TPS kind of dropped wrestling is when the mommy Bay class and Waite dropped the Mary Kerr, uh, it's kind of when the mommy Bay classic got going. Um, but you're right. Yeah. We're, uh, we've got a little bit of weather coming this week and I don't think it'll affect anything, but, um, super excited coach beach and coach, uh, Troy and, the administration at Clay, um, you know, everyone from our superintendent to um, our athlete, we have our new athletic director, our principal, they've just done a great job in WAGS. I mean, this thing is just so plug and play. Um, you know, really all I got to do is provide people to work tables and roll out mats and roll up mats. Um, you know, they, uh, they just done a great job. It's, it's like a well-oiled machine, you know, each year. So, we are, you know, the, the thing that's always unique about the Mommy Bay Classic. I know some people moan and groan a little bit about it, but we run the uh, semifinals on Friday night. Um, so it does make for that quicker Saturday. We just come in, run Concy semis, and then, or Concy quarters, Concy semis, and then right in the placement. Um, we're out by like one o'clock on Saturday. So uh, the other good thing, too, and uh, we'll get you taken care of this weekend. Um, our culinary department at Clay runs the uh, hospitality room and they do food to order, omelets to order, hot sand. Well, yeah, it's awesome. They do a fantastic job. We have about 15 students and our, uh, sh our lead chef at the school who put all that together. So it's, it's a really cool tournament. It's really cool for the city of Oregon. Uh, you know, all of our local, Bar and grills get filled up on Friday night. Um, the students look forward to it. The teachers look forward to it. And so we're really excited uh, to get this thing going for uh, 2024. What are the local places that really get the commerce from the uh, the tournament? Oregon Inn. You don't have the Bay Shore Supper Club anymore, do you? No. Nope. Uh, I would imagine the Oregon Inn gets a little bit. But like our local places would be like uh, Lucky's Bar and Grill. Okay. Uh, if you've ever been there, they're good. Um, um, Patty Joe's, it's a newer place out there um, on that Oregon Northwood line. And then we have a BW3s that I'm sure they'll get the majority of. By, by, by the by the Walmart route too? Yeah, yeah. it's just kind of in a simple location. I would imagine a lot of those hotels on route two are probably booked up. And so um, it'll either be Lucky's or uh, BW3s that just naturally gets a lot of. A lot of customers. Can I tell you something that I really love about Medina? Actually, yeah. All these tournaments we've mentioned, we've mentioned. Um, you know, Solon I don't think fits in that that tier, yeah. in my opinion. But I think that um, obviously Ironman is the crown jewel of of right. season high school wrestling in the country. <clears throat> um, Brexville, uh, and then we've got. Uh, Perrysburg and, and then we got you guys right like those are the four we've all we've we've mentioned all four of them yeah um, and we gotta you know we'll throw you in with that and um those ones all run two gyms yeah I'm selfish I want all the action in my gym right yeah. 
I don't think Marcus Blaze should ever be in any aux gym wrestling on a back corner mat. No, no. he should have Matt one reserved at all times, right? Um, I don't think Garrison Weisner should be um, over in the back corner in the aux gym. That's just my opinion. Um, is there ever going to be a situation where you guys are able to run just one gym or put um, a small front end of it, which is a big front end, which is a round one or two, and then just cut out that that gym and just run one gym and keep it more of a fan friendly, parent friendly experience? I don't know if it would make it more. I don't know if it'd make it more fan friendly. I think that the gym would get um, tight, be shoulder to shoulder a little bit, um, and so. You know, and these are all things, these are all questions that we talk about. We actually put together a little tournament committee this year. Um, Coach Beach did, actually, and it's got, like, Coach Beach and Ralph and um, and, and those two kind of ask each other those questions. Um, how can we adapt? How can we um, make it better? I don't, I don't know if we can get out of two gyms. You know, it's going to be interesting this year, though, with the new rule, 30-minute uh, rule and six matches. We're just running it the same, but, like, Last year on day two, we would run into the 45-minute rule, um, whereas opposed to this year, we shouldn't be running into that as much. And so could end up even a earlier Friday or Saturday. Um, but do we want to adjust that in the future? Um, do we want to get out earlier on day one? How do we want to keep making this thing more efficient? Because, you know, we do like, you know, we, we hear this from some of the Cincinnati coaches you know, they always tell us, you know, what we love about the Mommy Bay Classic is we can go to you guys, we can wrestle in your tournament, and I can be home um, on Saturday night before one of the other Cincinnati schools gets home from one of their local tournaments. They're home by 5, 6 o'clock on Saturday, you know, sitting down watching watching football as opposed to, you know, staying in town and being at a tournament until 8 o'clock at night. Um, and so we always want to continue to – have that feeling for our, our coaches and our visitors. But how can we, how can we make it better? I don't think you can get out of a second gym. I'm sorry. I want those Cincinnati coaches home um, so that they can watch the Browns in the playoffs. I would, I, I, I would like those, I want those Cincinnati coaches to be home to be able to get that. They'll be able know. to do that. Trust me. They'll be able to do that this year. So. Oh, they got a ticker tape parade for beating our uh, our uh, practice squad pe- team this week. This week, though, that was good for them. Was I was happy. Bad, man, that was bad. I was, I was very happy for them that our our practice squad could um give them some glory in a ticker tape parade or whatever they needed. Yeah, this thing would be week eighteen, and you guys were sitting Joe Flacco for rest so he can get ready for a playoff game. He's old. <laughs> He's old. He might need a walker, dude. Come on. <laughs> um. Talk to me about the 120. Could, could we see the Wisner Limbert match? And are we going to hopefully be able to potentially separate them? Because 120, and I know, like, listen, we were talking about matches that were maybe going to happen with because Watterson didn't show up to pit. Yeah. You might have a situation where a team don't show up. Or this is Tuesday night. You know, the wrestling starts Friday morning. Yeah. Uh, right. Like, th- th- we yeah. got to talk about matchups. We're building up the. Yeah. But, we see that 120 matchup between Wisner and your defending state champ. Yeah, I think so. I think I and I think just off the top of my head, criteria wise, I do think they're going to be separated in the bracket. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, Garrison's it's not going to be an easy route. He's going to have to beat, um, you know, maybe Dankins or the Solon kid that he beat in the Medina quarterfinals, who is a, a strong wrestler. Sharply's tough. Sharply's yeah, tough. Sharp. Sharply, yeah, he's done. And those Solon kids, they they go, man. They go, 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 go. Yeah. So um, it's not going to be an easy road for him, um, but I got all the confidence in him. He's a he's a he's a unique young person, uh, strong minded, and I strong minded as as a young man as I've ever met, actually. So um, that alone, and then his confidence when he goes out there, he's just telling me the other days, like I haven't been nervous for a match since I was in like sixth grade i was like are you, are you being honest with me and he's like yeah i just i just just have fun when i go out there you know so for him to be able to do that the maturity to be able to do that um it just it when you watch him wrestle it makes sense you know so i'm excited I, he's excited he loves towing the line in front of his um he can be a showman too he loves towing the line in front of the home crowd he loved it last year 
you know, I think you were there when he, you know, gets the takedown uh, against Dankins and the clay crowd erupts, you know, and that was just a cool feeling for him. Or when he, you know, he pinned sharp, act sharply for, for third and fourth there last year and the crowd erupted for him. He, he likes towing the line in front of the home, home crowd. So it's going to be a fun weekend. Looking at teams that come in for, for the Mummy Bay Classic, um, we got Buckeye back, Medina Buckeye's back. They won the MIT at Medina. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Perrysburg's back. Is Whitmer's there? Is Whitmer's Whitmer. there, Wadsworth. Um, Wadsworth, the group. Okay. So I think they're the champs. They won the that's tournament. Right. That's right. They beat, they beat Perry. That's right. Perrysburg might not have had Cole Evans or something. Something like that. They had one guy missing. And so. One guy missing, and, and and Coach Wenger got him. And now it's now it's old Coach Wenger. It's Clay's dad is the head coach. Yeah, right. That so, wild. Uh, um. So so we got them. Mentor. Got some great potential matchups up and down the lineup there. If you're bringing Wadsworth in, but as far as it's probably going to be a three team race. Would you say between Buckeye, Perrysburg, um, Buckeye, Wadsworth, and then Perrysburg? Would you say? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Um. Man, Buckeye ran away with with Medina. They're really good. I they got a really good team. They got a good team. Um, and, and Perrysburg's got a good team when they have all their guys in the lineup as well. But, um, yeah, we'll see. It'll be fun. And who knows what mentor – this is mentor's first year at the tournament. Oh, mentor. They got some guys. They got a good 44-pounder. Yep. And uh, I think that Debo is back, right? Is that their 44? Or... Yeah, he's tough. Yeah, that's who Micah wrestled in the semis last year at the state tournament. So, Jack hey. Debo, he's yeah. tough. Oh, 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 yeah. Um, yes. Um, Debo, Debo, yeah. Yeah. Debeau. His brother Sorry. Russell's at Lake Erie College, Nate Debo. Um, I think their dad's Jack. Okay. He was a state champ at want to say Maple. Um well, they'll be in the mix and um any any Michigan, any Michigan. There is a couple Michigan teams. They won't they won't be in the they won't be in the in the mix on top. They're not gonna like, be in the Warren, mix. Warren, Warren Woods Tower, you know them, they're there. they they'll be like I mean, they'll have some some guys. They'll be yeah. one top twenty or something, probably. But okay, who's the other one? I, I couldn't tell you. I, Warren Woods might be the only Michigan team. Okay, so hey, they are. I want to say that's where Tay Gadiali might be from. Um, it's like in Detroit. In the it's in yeah, Warren. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh it's off of Eight Mile, dude. That's a well, real. It is. We went we went there for a scrimmage this year. That's right it's off eight mile. mile. Yeah. Um, Howie Howie was a state champ for him last year. Howie is at Lake Erie College now. Uh, Joshua Howie. Him and Tay Gadiali are cousins. They're from Warren, Michigan. So okay. they've got they have some individuals like you're saying. Um, who else should we be looking out for as far as Northwest Ohio team? We have Delta. You'll have Delta, right? Yep, Delta will be there. Um, they'll have a couple guys there. I don't know if he's bringing his whole They got Centobin. I don't know if um, Barnes was hurt last week. Um, he, I want to say, defaulted out maybe out of Medina and didn't place there. So we could see Barnes. Barnes is always a tough customer at 20. Uh, he's a returning state placer, obviously, Matt and Centobin. So that, you know, how about there's always a Matt or a Centobin on the team? It oh, seems like a Delta. No, geez. I was thinking about that with the Mattins when I was watching uh, the semifinals the other day. Like, man, just, you know, since I, you know, since I can remember. There's been a Matt <laughs> the Delta team. So, but Wasian will be there. They're tough. They're Wasian strong. is tough. Yeah. Wasian has really good guys. Um, I don't know how many more Torres they have left. Right. Yeah. That's another <laughs> one. Yeah. They got a lot of Torres, dude. Yeah. Tough too. Yeah. I watch so them. Tough. Those guys are gritty. I like them. Yeah. yeah. That whole area, you know, and the Archbold's there. That's another gritty team. Archbold's at, Archbold's at this? Yep. Rodney Dominique's. Oh, I forgot. That's right. I, I interviewed he him. That. He Ro- hey, hey, Rodney Dominique is a guy that belongs in the Big Ten. I'm just going to put yeah. it out there. Yeah, he's good. He's, he's really good. good. He's really good. Wow, dude. I didn't know. So this field is shaping up, man. And they've got some returning state uh, finalists in the yeah. bigger upperweights, too. Yeah, they're good. Our is nobody center there? Uh, I think maybe Tamarine is. Um, or then they have Xander Myers, too. Yeah, I I, 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 I couldn't tell you off the top of my St. head. John. St. That? John's. St. John's is there, yeah. Wow, so Yaki will be there. Beck will be there. They got good guys, man. Nap- yeah. No Napoleon, right? No Napoleon? No. They got a good team, dude. Well, Napoleon's got a really good team. They're in the NFL. Yeah, they were third at Pitt. They got a good team. Yeah, they're strong. 
Uh, are the Northeast Ohio's the two biggies? Um, is it, it's gonna or the three biggies would be Solon, Buckeye, and um, Wadsworth, right? Those are the only three big Northeast. Well, Illyria, Illyria will be there. Illyria, well, I mean, Illyria's best guy is now a Perkins pirate, right? And and um, Perkins is there. McKinney, oh Perkins, yeah, he does yeah. a good job there to defending SBC champs, Coach Crabtree. He's got some explosive good well. athletes. Yeah, I like it. I like the field, man. You, the more you're talking, the more I'm like, oh, 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 there's some landmines here. Yeah. The depth of the weights kind of shores up, in my opinion, yeah. with what yeah. you're talking about. Like last year, uh, Limber and Wisner was a quarterfinal because yeah. Wisner couldn't be seated because there's no criteria for freshmen, right? They didn't place at the state tournament. They didn't do this or that. So it ended up being a quarterfinal. Um, so there'll be some more of those, like, interesting quarterfinals that it's like, man, I really want to see that match. Um I'm excited. I'm real excited for some great wrestling. It's always tough. I don't get to watch it as much because if I'm not coaching, I'm running around doing something. So I got to go back and watch it on um, Go Ohio cast. So. Yeah. And Nietenbach, uh is tough at 90. So we could see that matchup with Yaki. Yeah. That's a really good matchup, actually, because Nietenbach took third at the Ironman. <laughs> yeah. He's really good. He's going really to good. Wyoming. Eddie Nietenbach is – actually super tough and i think he was third at state last year and then i think aiden king uh aiden king he beat mckinney he's a 60 he's a returning returning state champ for buckeye yeah right he won he beat mckinney in overtime at, at uh Medina. Yeah, he's pretty good too yeah and then i think him and limbert are going to pit pit, like. pit. yeah they're going to yeah. pit yeah Pitt's good yeah it's a cool situation, dude. You get to go and, and, and be a college student and wrestle in Pittsburgh. It's, I wouldn't pass up on that. If I, if I, if my kids can do that, I want them to do it, you know? Right. Um, okay. What else you got for me? Anything else? Um, no, man, just real excited about this weekend. Excited to have you uh, there. And again, I'm just appreciative for all you do for, for us. I man, it's cool to be able to wake up on Sunday and watch the pit semifinals or, the NBC finals, whatever it may be. So, yeah, appreciate all you do. I have horrible news for you about the NBC. I will not be covering the NBC. I'm in, I'm in protest and I'm still wearing my SPC over my heart. Okay. So I don't know if something changes, man, I don't know. Crazier things have happened, but I'm really bitter over that. I'm really, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm like, and it's like, I'm, this yeah. 44, I'm a 44 year old guy. Who lives two hours from? Yeah, where do they even do any of that? And I'm like, still just super bitter, mad about O'Carver leaving the SBC and going to the NBC and yeah. grinds my gears. I'm I'm just such a fan. And now you guys are in the NLL, right? Right. And I said, well, O'Carver's at the NBC or at Mommy Bay. They're tough, man. O'Carver, Coach Bergman again. He just does a fantastic job. They just got gritty dudes that fight really hard and hustle and have a lot of effort. So. Uh, we'll see how that does you at the uh, Mommy Bay Classic, which is – how many teams at the Mommy Bay Classic total? 60. You have 60. Six teams? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how we start in the morning. So the, the district is actually off. It's actually a teacher work day. Um, so no students throughout the whole district. So it actually kind of helps. But wow. um, you, you get know. to work more on your teacher work day. Good for I you. Know. <laughs> I know. You get to, like, quadruple work. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Uh any other miscellaneous stuff? Give me your best potential final, semifinal, quarterfinals. Give me your best matchups of the tournament. Who I, I potential, I, I, potential. Yeah, I'm excited for the Limbert and Weisner um match. You know, Blaze. I don't know who he's gonna get. I just like watching him no, wait. no wait. No wait. No wait, no no Phoenix. None of that. Then, um, you know, we're going to get at six. The Buckeye has a good six pounder. Uh, what's his name? Bartos. Uh, Bartos. Bartos. We're going to have Bartos and Dodd and, Med and Medina, uh, Josh Medina from Clay. Okay. Um, so that's going to be in that Solon freshman. Um, I don't know if you've watched him yet. He's he plays like fifth or sixth at Medina. So he's tough. That's going to be a good way. I, you know, and I, after that, I just – I, I don't know all the matchups and things, you know, I'm just, like I said, coach beach has, has done such a good job that I can just focus 
on practice and making sure I have workers throughout the week of the Molly Ray Classic. I don't have to do anything else. So, um, I mean, Nietenbach but, versus Yaki is. Yeah. And who's, um, who's, um, the Archbold kid got to get in the finals? Uh, Dominique, who, um, what weights Jackson Joy? Him and Jackson Joy aren't going to meet up. I think Joy might be at 50, but he could be at 44. He could probably be. Yeah. That's a really um, good matchup. If that's a, if it's a Jackson Joy, Brody Dominique matchup, because we don't know what weights they are. Yeah. So that would be. 50, a, that, that could be. be really good, I'd um, say that'd be your, besides like a Matten, uh, Matten, obviously, Gray Burnett. Um, but I, you know, that's a great matchup. But um, and then it might might have to see who uh, Ginter gets because Ginter, Ginter's so talented, man. He's, man. he's kind of beating everyone up right now. And then, you know, plays at Iron Man. So yeah. And then when when Ginter like wants to score, wants to he like changes gears. Mm -hmm. he's got like gears that he doesn't even know he has. So and uh, yeah, Ginter's really good. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that one that joy. Joy versus Dominique. Brody Dominique is a hammer. Did you hear what happened to Dominique at the Ironman? I heard he missed weight on day two. Hold on. Their check scale. I heard this from a couple different coaches. They're like, yeah, the check scale was nowhere near something like that. Yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't close in weight. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, the Ironman. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Yeah. What was amazing was wrestling till midnight. On day yeah, one. yeah. So, yeah, but I don't, you can't do that to your athletes with a check scale. You cannot. No, do that. Yeah. It has to be. It's got to be within a point two of minimum, right? Of. Yeah. I mean, if you make it, make it heavy. You make it heavy, if anything, right? You want the kids on mm -hmm. a check scale to, to check heavy, right? And then, um, it's better safe than sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. I mean, that just yeah. But Brody Dominique's the real deal. And I don't think Brody Dominique's in the business of missing weight all the time. Right. Especially yeah. the toughest, toughest tournament where he just made the quarter final or the semifinals. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Think, I don't think that was on his list for this to-do list for the day. <laughs> make the semis and then not make weight. Yeah, probably. Yeah, not. I don't think I don't think it's that's Brody Dominique's jam, trust me. <laughs> all right. Are you in your classroom, dude? No, I'm at home. I'm at home. Okay, this I was year. gonna, I was gonna yell at you. I'm not gonna lie no, to you. I'm I'm like, you maniac, go home. Last no. time we did this, you did it in your classroom till yeah. five o'clock at night. Yeah, you lunatic. I love it, Coach Wharton. Anything else for me? Anything good that we need to talk about for the tournament? Anything cool awards? We got the, um, we got a chef that's gonna be there with a staff of students. Yeah. And right. Anything else that's unique to the tournament? No, man. Um, can't wait for you to, to be there and watch all the competition and get some good content. Um, and yeah, go Eagles. We're going to, we're going to battle hard. So nothing else. I love it. All right. I'm going to sign off here with the go high cast podcast. Thank you for the key matchups, the history of the Miami Bay classic and the field that we're going to see on Friday and Saturday and the scheduling and the common sense that will prevail in the seating turn in the seating meeting coach warden thank you for the time stick around thank you.